French forces expanded air assaults in Mali today from the north into the central region of the country. Despite the stepped-up bombardment, rebels advanced on the town of Diabolé in a march toward the capital, according to France's defense minister and media reports from the area. France has deployed more than 500 troops in the country, most of them in Bamako, the capital to the south. France began the assault last Friday, warning that some of the militant groups in the north of the country had ties to al-Qaeda and threatened the region. The U.S said it is considering sending drone surveillance and intelligence to support the effort. Last month, the Security Council authorized a one-year military mission led by African forces in the country, and the council took up the issue again today. As the military situation escalates, aid groups warned of more people displaced by the fighting and disruption in access to the limited medical services in the region. For more, we're joined by Dr. Greg Elder, Deputy Director of Operations for Doctors Without Borders. He joins us from Paris. Welcome to FSRN. Thank you. First, talk about the civilians who you've been treating who have been wounded by the air offensive. Where are they coming from? We, we, have, we have projects in and around Gao, uh, and we have uh, additional projects in Duenza and Timbuktu. Those are, those are hospital projects where we do emergency room uh, activities and surgery. Uh, so well set up to, to, uh, to accept uh, patients uh, wounded uh, in combat. And those, many of those projects have been uh, running since about March of, of last year. So your teams in Timbuktu, which is not in the immediate area of, of the conflict that we're talking about, they have uh, seen injured people. In Timbuktu, over the last couple of days, we've received, you know, a couple of dozen patients um, in the hospital who, who have, you know, fresh wounds. People are coming from quite far, seven or eight hours drive away, uh, and the streets of Timbuktu are relatively empty. We're not sure if that means that everyone has has, has fled or people are just uh, afraid and they're sort of hiding uh, in, in their own homes. Uh, certainly, the analysis of the team on the ground is that people are a bit afraid to move uh, and don't feel like they can move freely and even access the hospital. You mentioned Gao as well. That was uh, the site where militants had claimed control of that as a capital. Um, there were reports that the French bombing uh, drove some of the militants out. But y- your staff there is saying that there are people who are coming in for, for treatment? Yeah, we, we, we have a project sort of on the outskirts of Gao, and they've, they've made some sort of sweeps through Gao to try to see if they can support uh, the hospital in Gao and provide extra supplies. Uh, and what they've said is that they've seen uh, uh, vehicles loaded with, uh, with wounded patients being coming to the hospital, but not much visibility on, on, on how many patients and how many uh, uh, dead and wounded, nor the repartition between civilians and those active in the conflict. Anytime there's a conflict like this or the violence steps up, the concern about refugees or or those displaced is high. Your organization has um, a team, has personnel along the border with Mauritania, and you report some refugees there. What's the latest situation there? Yeah, the team in Mauritania work in a work in a camp called Fasala, and they've said that uh, over the last few days there's been several hundred people coming, principally from near Funki and Lere, which are close to the border. Um, and those and those refugees have have stated that there's many more on their way, but most of them can't find vehicles to to travel in, are having to travel by foot, so it may be several days before they get there. Obviously, they may not be in a, in a great state when they arrive, and so we're sort of reinforcing. Uh, the the activities and trying to provide mobile clinics en route to take and charge anyone who is wounded or, or, or to provide relief materials. The UN Security Council took up the issue today. This is Ambassador Mohammed Masood Khan of Pakistan, the president of the Security Council for January, speaking late last week. The members of the Security Council express their grave concern over the reported military movements and attacks by terrorist and extremist groups in the north of Mali, in particular, their capture of the city of Kana near Mopti. This serious deterioration of the situation threatens even more the stability and integrity of Mali and constitutes a direct threat to international peace and security. Ambassador Khan calls it a direct threat to security, and countries, including France, do not appear to be close to backing down. Greg Elder with Doctors Without Borders, what are your concerns as a military conflict continues in, in the coming days? Well, I mean, as you noted, that uh, you know, there's there's certainly a, a strategic line being drawn uh, and uh, sort of a, a line in the sand across the. the 
the territory of, of, of central Mali to, to prevent uh, uh, the rebels continuing to march towards Bamako. Uh, as that expands uh, to the north and to the northeast, uh, we're, we're talking about bombardment in areas where there's relatively few uh, medical uh, services available to, to patients either directly affected by the combat or displaced by the combat. So for us, a movement is, is very limited, very restricted, uh, and you know our concern obviously is that uh, is that you know civilians are respected in in in, in the ongoing conflict uh, and that uh, uh, humanitarian relief and medical services uh, are given the space to be able to operate uh, and, uh, and are respected by, by combatants on both sides. Greg Elder is Deputy Director of Operations for Doctors Without Borders. He joined us to discuss the stepped-up military action in Mali and the risk to civilians in the area. Greg Elder, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Dorian.